Welcome to the MyPlate module on Nutrition for 4-H Foods Projects. We are glad you are able to join us today. My name is Allison Berg and I am a UGA Extension Nutrition and Health Specialist. Carolina Cawthon, a graduate student at UGA, is my co-author of these trainings. Thank you, Carolina, for your help. This module is supposed to help you understand the basics of nutrition so that you can prepare for your district and state foods projects. We recommend that you watch this video more than once to be really prepared for your project. There are several times during the presentation where I will recommend you stop the video if you need some more time to review or if you just need a break. It is okay to stop the video at these points and review, especially if this is your first time learning about these topics. You can always come back at a later time to view the next sections. There is also a document posted on the website with additional resources for information and a script for this PowerPoint so you can follow along or study without the audio. If you are a senior attending state conference, it will be especially important for you to brush up on your nutrition knowledge. So let's get started. Here's what you can expect to learn about as we work through the MyPlate nutrition module. What is my plate? Nutrients and energy from food. The food groups. What nutrients are found in these food groups? How much of each of these foods you need? Building a healthy plate. That includes any time for sometimes foods and maximizing nutrition. And then there are a few key messages to close out our presentation. So what is MyPlate? MyPlate is a teaching tool that shows us the five food groups that are the building blocks for a healthy diet using a familiar image, a place setting for a meal. MyPlate helps us visualize what our plates should look like to plan a healthy meal. You will see that the plate setting shows five food groups, fruits, vegetables, protein, grains, and dairy foods. In the next slides, we will learn why these foods are grouped this way and why it's important to eat these foods. The foods we eat provide big and small things that our bodies need to live and grow. As we said, the foods we eat provide big and small nutrients that our bodies need to live and grow. Big nutrients include protein, fat, and carbohydrates. Big nutrients also provide energy and are needed in bigger amounts. Small nutrients include... It's important to know that the big nutrients, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, give us the energy we need. Energy is the capacity to do work. Food contains stored energy. The energy we take in is used to help us do the body's work like digest our food, run and play, think, breathe, and heal. We need energy from food to live. The big nutrients, carbohydrates, protein, and fat provide energy. Just like we measure your height in inches or feet, energy is measured in calories. So don't be scared of the word calorie. It's just a unit of measurement, like an inch or a foot. This may all seem confusing, but really the important message is fairly simple. We need to balance our energy. We want the energy we take in from food to be in balance with the energy we use in our daily activities. Balance is the key. And using my plate can help us achieve balance. How many calories we need for energy in depends on how much energy we put out, also measured in calories. When we're growing as teens, we need more energy. When we're really active, we need more energy. Check out www.choosemyplate.gov to determine how many calories you need for your age, gender, and activity.
Now that we know about energy, let's talk more about the nutrients. As we said, big nutrients provide energy and are needed in bigger amounts. But these nutrients also have functions beyond just providing energy. Small nutrients include vitamins and minerals. They do not provide energy and are needed in smaller amounts, but they have big roles to play in the body. So let's talk about each one individually. Let's start with the big nutrients, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Remember, big nutrients provide energy. You've probably heard that protein is important for building strong muscles, but did you know that protein is important in every cell of the body? It is involved in many chemical reactions in every cell. Protein is also very important in healing, like when you get sick, break a bone, or get a scrape. Protein helps heal and repair. Protein can also provide energy, but the body would rather use other nutrients for energy, like fats and carbohydrates. Protein foods and dairy foods are the main sources of protein in the diet. However, grains also provide protein and some vegetables, especially beans and peas, provide protein as well. Fats are great sources of energy. Fat is really good for storing energy for times when we don't eat as much, like when we're sleeping. It's also an important part of the brain and nerves. Fat also helps us keep our body at a healthy temperature. Did you know that your body's internal temperature is a warm 98 degrees? Fat helps keep it there. Fat is also important for carrying vitamins in the body. So we need fat for health. Fat is found in many foods. Protein and dairy foods provide fat. We will talk more about this as we talk about these food groups. Grains also provide some fat. Oils and solid fats are pure fat. They are not a group on my plate, but we will talk about them later as they are an important source of fat in the diet. Carbohydrates also provide energy. Sugar and fiber are types of carbohydrates. It's important to know that sugar, also known as glucose, is the main source of energy for our brain. That's why it's so important to eat breakfast, especially before school. Fiber is also a carbohydrate. Fiber is important to digestive health. This means that it helps your body break down the food you eat, use what it needs, and get rid of waste. Vitamins and minerals are the smaller nutrients that our bodies need. They are smaller in size and don't provide energy, but they are big players for our health. Why do we need vitamins? Vitamins help our bodies do so many things. So for your foods projects, we're just going to focus on a few vitamins that you'll see on the nutrition label on foods you buy. For example, vitamin A does many things in the body, but is best known for helping your eyesight. Vitamin C is best known for helping fight off germs and sickness. Vitamin D is important for strong bones and teeth. Vegetables and fruits are some of the best sources of these vitamins. Dairy foods are important sources of vitamins A and D. Grains also provide vitamins, especially B vitamins, which you may have heard about in the news. But B vitamins are not on food labels, so we won't talk about them too much for this project. Like the vitamins, there are many minerals, too many to discuss in this module. So for your foods projects, we will focus primarily on those you will find on the food label and just a few of their functions. These minerals are calcium, iron, sodium, also known as salt, and potassium. Calcium works with vitamin D to build strong bones and teeth. Iron is important for healthy blood cells that support exercise and energy. Iron is also really important for growth in kids and teens. Sodium is also known as salt. Sodium is important for maintaining blood pressure, but too much can be bad for your health. Sodium is also important for hydration or keeping the amount of water in our body steady. 
so the body needs sodium, but most Americans eat too much salt. Potassium is another mineral that is very important for healthy blood pressure. Sometimes potassium is on the food label and sometimes it is not. Dairy is an important source of all of these minerals. Protein foods are good sources of iron, as are some vegetables. Fruits and vegetables are great sources of potassium, and grains provide some of these too. Sodium is found in many foods and is important for food safety. But remember, too much sodium can be bad for our health. So remember, each of these big and small nutrients is important, but balance is the key to both energy and nutrients. Too little of a nutrient or energy is not healthy. Too much of a nutrient or energy is not healthy. But wow, we just learned a lot. How do you know how much of each of these big in nutrients and small nutrients we need? And how do we know how to get them all? Well, don't worry. That's why we have MyPlate. MyPlate makes this all easier. MyPlate is a tool to help you find the right balance of nutrients and energy by focusing on foods. And we're familiar with foods, right? So let's talk about the food groups. We just went over a lot of information. If you're feeling a little confused, now is a good time to take a break. You can review the materials up until now until you get comfortable. Take your time. It's okay if you need to try again. When you feel good about the material, come join us again for the next part of the presentation. The food groups. So let's look at the plate again. Here's a drawing of the plate with the food groups identified and some examples from each group. Notice the size of each section. Using these sizes as a guide for your own portions helps you get just the right amount of everything that your body needs to be healthy. So let's look at each of these groups individually. For each of the groups, we're going to talk about a few things that will be important for you to know for your food project. We will talk about the nutrients provided by each group and how much of each group is needed per day. You will notice that fruits, vegetables, and dairy are expressed in cups per day because they are easy to measure this way. It's easy to think about a cup of milk, right? However, grains and protein foods are measured in ounces. So let's talk about grains. Grains are important for us because they provide carbohydrates and fiber which if you remember is a type of carbohydrate. Because grains provide carbohydrate, and carbohydrates are a good source of energy, that means that grains are an important source of energy. They also provide iron and some other vitamins. They are shown as a little more than half of the right side of your plate to demonstrate that a good portion of our diet should come from grain foods so we get enough of these nutrients and energy that grain provides. Teens need about six ounces of grains every day. One ounce of grains is one slice of bread. A half a cup of cooked rice or pasta also counts as one ounce of grains as does one ounce of ready-to-eat cereal. Ready-to-eat cereal just means that you don't have to cook it before eating it. Examples are Cheerios, Chex, Raisin Bran, Wheaties, and other cereals you would find on the cereal aisle of your grocery store. The MyPlate website has a detailed list of what makes up one ounce of grains. The important things is that you get a variety of grains to meet your daily needs of about six ounces per day. When we talk about grains, we usually talk about two types of grains, whole grains and refined grains. Whole grains contain all parts of the grain, while refined grains have some of the grain parts removed. Generally, 
whole grains will have more of the things that make grain foods good for us. So my plate recommends that you make at least half of your grains whole grains. Here on this slide you will see examples of some whole grain foods like brown rice, oatmeal, did you know that popcorn was a whole grain? Do you see the whole wheat flour? This means that breads and bread products like bagels, pizza dough, and English muffins that are made from whole wheat flour are whole grains. Many cereals are also whole grains. Some less common whole grains include amaranth, millet, quinoa, and triticale. Remember, refined grains are grains that have had some parts of the grain removed during processing. Refined grains have less of the big and small nutrients that make grains good for us, but they typically provide the same amount of energy or calories. These are some examples of refined grains. Do you see the all-purpose flour? This means that foods made primarily from all-purpose flour, also known as enriched white flour, are made from refined grains. Remember, you want to get half of your grains from whole grains, so you should choose less of your grains from the refined grains list. In fact, enriched wheat flour is still considered a refined grain. The ingredient labels on foods can help you see what kinds of grains your food are made from. You will want to see the word whole, as in this label where it says whole grain wheat flour, as one of the first few ingredients to identify that that food is a whole grain. There is more information about whole grains and refined grains on the MyPlate website and at the links in the additional resources section. Please note, if you are in the pizza project, it will be important for you to review the information on the ChooseMyPlate.gov website on grains in more detail. You should know a little bit more about grains than what we have reviewed here. Vegetables are really important as they provide many vitamins and minerals, especially vitamins A, C, and potassium. Vegetables are also important sources of fiber. Vegetables are generally low in calories, but some provide more calories from carbohydrates than others. Vegetables make up a little more than half of the left side of our plates to demonstrate how important these foods are for our health. They help us get many of the nutrients we need, especially vitamins, minerals, and fiber, for relatively few calories. So they really help us to maximize nutrition and balance our energy. You need about two and a half cups every day. One cup of vegetables is one cup of cooked or raw vegetables or vegetable juice, or two cups of leafy salad greens. To be sure about what counts as a serving, you can always visit the Choose My Plate website for detailed lists. Fresh, frozen, and canned vegetables are all nutritious choices. The important thing is to get a variety. You can do this by choosing from all available colors – red, orange, green, purple, yellow, the list goes on. The veggies on the right side show us many of the colors we can get by varying our veggies. Different colors means different nutrients. Fruits, found in the top left corner of my plate, are great sources of vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates, and fiber. The carbohydrates in fruit are natural sugars that are good sources of energy. Since fruits generally provide more energy than vegetables, we need a little less of them to keep our energy in balance yet maximize our nutrition. So they're a little smaller part of the left half of our plate. We need about two cups of fruit every day. One cup of fruit is about one cup of raw or cooked fruit, 
or one cup of 100% fruit juice. So that just means all fruit juice, no sugar added. Half a cup of dried fruit counts as one cup of fruit. Like with veggies, fresh, frozen, canned, and even dried fruits are all nutritious choices. Dried fruits are a great way to add fruit to your diet without worrying about spoilage. Removing most of the water concentrates the nutrients and energy in the dried fruits. Since they are concentrated, the serving size for dried fruits is smaller than the serving size for fresh, canned, or frozen fruits. Whole fruits, especially those eaten with the peel on, will have more fiber than fruit juices. Since fiber helps us feel full and keeps our digestive system moving, choose whole fruits over fruit juices more often. Like with veggies, eat a variety of fruits of many colors to get all your vitamins and minerals. Next, we'll talk about dairy foods. Dairy foods are incredibly important for health because they provide protein, calcium, and vitamin D. Calcium and vitamin D are not found in large amounts in the other food groups, so it's really important to get these nutrients from dairy foods for strong bones and teeth. On the MyPlate graphic, dairy is depicted by a beverage glass or a milk glass. While milk is a great way to get your dairy foods, yogurt and cheese are also good sources of dairy. Most children and teens need three cups of dairy each day. One cup of regular milk or yogurt counts as one cup. Some people can't drink milk or don't like milk and so they might choose soy milk or almond milk instead. It's important to know that these milk substitutes must be labeled as fortified to be considered equal to milk in the nutrients that they provide. So one cup of fortified soy milk counts as one cup of dairy foods. One cup of unfortified soy milk does not count as one cup of dairy foods. Most of the soy milks, almond milks, and other milk substitutes that you see at the grocery store will be fortified. But don't forget to check the label. Cheese is a little bit different. One and a half ounces of natural cheese counts as one cup of dairy, but two ounces of processed cheese counts as one cup of dairy. That's because processed cheese has water and other ingredients in it that make it have less nutrients per ounce than regular cheese. We will talk more about this on a later slide. Dairy foods naturally contain some fat, and some of that fat is saturated, which is not good for our health if we get too much of it. When choosing dairy foods, choose low fat or fat-free dairy most of the time. Lactose is a sugar that occurs naturally in all milk and some people need to avoid lactose. If you cannot or do not drink milk or choose not to drink milk, Choose other foods rich in calcium like cheese and yogurt. If you need to avoid lactose for medical reasons, lactose-free products are another option. All fluid milks can be part of a healthy diet, but again, whole milk should be chosen less often, if at all. Lower fat milks provide the same protein, vitamins, and minerals as whole milk, but less fat. Flavored milks give you the nutrients you need, but they do contain added sugar, so choose them less often. As stated earlier, lactose-free and lactose-reduced and fortified soy milk can be other options. Other milk substitutes like almond milk and coconut milk vary greatly in their protein, calcium, and vitamin D, so if you do choose these products, make sure to read the labels. In addition to fluid milk, milk-based desserts, yogurt and cheese are common sources of dairy foods. Milk-based desserts, like ice cream, frozen yogurt, and pudding, will have added sugars, which means more energy or calories, 
so choose these less often. As with milk, choose low-fat or fat-free yogurt more often. On the previous slides, we mentioned natural versus processed cheese. Natural cheeses are typically made with milk, salt, and enzymes. Different types of milk, different enzymes, and different curing time give natural cheeses many different textures and flavors. So there are hard cheeses, to semi-hard, to semi-soft, and soft cheeses, and all of sorts in between. Processed cheeses are made with some natural cheese plus added milk, oil, flavors, and sometimes colors. Processed American cheese is very common and is often packaged in single servings. If a product is processed cheese, it must say so on the label. Remember, because of these added ingredients, the serving sizes are different for natural versus processed cheese. See the previous slides and choose myplate.gov for more information. Please note, if you are in the Dairy Foods Project, it will be important for you to review the module on dairy foods and the information on www.choosemyplate.gov website on dairy foods. You should know a little more about dairy foods than what we have reviewed here. So let's talk about protein foods. Remember, every cell in your body needs protein to do its job. Protein foods provide, well of course, protein, but they also provide minerals. They are a great source of iron. Protein foods also naturally contain some fat, and some of this can be saturated. So we often say, go lean with protein. Teens need about five and a half ounces of protein foods every day. One ounce of lean meat, fish, or poultry, one egg, one tablespoon of peanut butter, or a half ounce of nuts all contain all count as one ounce of protein. Beans and peas are special because they can be counted as protein foods or veggies. For people who choose to avoid meat in their diets, Beans and peas are an important source of protein. There are many healthy choices for protein foods. As we said, go lean with protein. This means less fat. You can do this by choosing to bake, broil, or grill so that you cook your meat without adding fat. You can also remove the skin on your chicken or turkey or cut away any visible fat on beef or pork. Another way to reduce the fat in your meats is to choose lean cuts of meat. Cuts typically refers to the part of the animal that the meat comes from, and some cuts are leaner than others. For example, choosing a chicken breast over a chicken wing means less fat. Pork tenderloin has less fat than bacon. When choosing ground meats, you can use the labels to find ones that say ground sirloin, ground round, or less than 10% fat. Some cuts have more fat than others and you should always choose the ones that are lower in fat. The protein group also includes fish. Most fish is fairly lean. There are a few fatty fish like salmon, tuna, and mackerel that are higher in fat but it's mostly unsaturated fat, which is healthier than saturated fat. We will talk more about this later. Soy products can be a good source of protein. You might be familiar with tofu, but tempeh and texturized vegetable protein are others that are good sources of protein. Veggie burgers are typically made from some combination of soy, and beans for protein and some grains. Dry beans and peas are a great way to increase vegetarian protein in your diet. They come in many varieties that provide different amounts of protein, carbohydrates, and energy, so try them all. Nuts and seeds also count as protein foods. 
peanuts, almonds, peanut butter are some you're probably familiar with. Sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds are some more common seeds eaten in the U.S. It is important to read the labels on your nuts and seeds as they can contain a lot of fat, although some of this will be unsaturated. Depending on how they are prepared or packaged, sometimes nuts and seeds can provide a lot of salt. So read your labels. Seafood, such as finfish, shellfish, and canned fish are important members of the protein group. So not only are the fish we talked about before included, but also shellfish like lobster, shrimp, and crab are included. Canned fish is a great way to purchase fish for cheaper and that will last a long time. So let's look at the plate again. We've reviewed all of the food groups on the plate, but there is one more food we should talk about. Oils. Oils are fats that are liquid at room temperature. They come mostly from vegetables and fish. Oils are important for health, but they are needed in very small amounts. Because the amount needed is so small, and because they are found within some foods already included in the MyPlate food groups, like fish, nuts, and seeds, Oils are not a MyPlate food group. Oils are important because they are made up of mostly unsaturated fats. Do you remember when we talked about fats being important for our brains and nerves? You do? Good! Well, it's the unsaturated fats that primarily make up oils that are important for our brains and nerves. Unsaturated fats are also sometimes called heart healthy fats because when we eat the right amount, they are healthy for our hearts and our brains too. Unlike unsaturated fats and oils, saturated and trans fats are bad for our heart health. It is important to limit these fats. Saturated and trans fats are also known as solid fats because they are solid at room temperature. It's easy to see these food, these solid fats in foods such as butter. But these solid fats are harder to see in foods such as cookies, hot dogs, and whole milk. So remember, we want to limit our solid fats. So there's one last food we should talk about, and that's sugar. Many foods naturally contain sugar. For example, fruits are naturally sweet and come straight off the tree with naturally occurring sugar. Milk naturally has sugar as well. Remember, we need sugar. Our brains use sugar exclusively. Other foods like cookies, cakes, and candy have sugar added to them to make them taste sweeter. And often these foods are not good sources of vitamins or minerals but they do provide lots of energy or calories. Sometimes these foods are said to have empty calories because they provide energy without adding any other nutrients to your diet. So now that you've learned all about the nutrients and all about the MyPlate food groups and a few other important foods, let's put it all together. Are you feeling confused? That's okay. This is another great place in the presentation to stop and review the materials. Come back when you're ready, or if you just have more energy to take the rest on. So, are you feeling nervous about all the information you've learned? It's okay. That's why we have my plate. It will help us build our plates to get the balance of nutrients we need without too little or too much of anything. Building a healthy plate means choosing foods that help you get all of the big things and small things that your body needs, nutrients and energy. So fill your plate according to my plate. It's easy. Let's use an example. 
This is Sally. Sally's mom tells her they're having chicken for dinner tonight, but Sally can help her plan the rest of the meal. Sally knows that chicken is a protein food, so Sally will take a piece of chicken to fill her protein foods on her plate. By choosing a piece that fits in the corner of her plate, Sally is making sure she gets the right amount of chicken or protein foods. Sally then thinks to herself, what next? How about grains? Sally remembers that rice is a grain and brown rice is a whole grain. So she chooses brown rice for her grains tonight. By taking a scoop of brown rice that fits in the grains corner of her plate, she knows she's getting the nutrients she needs, but not too much. Next, Sally thinks about vegetables. Mmm, Sally really likes potatoes, so she thinks about putting potatoes on her plate. Hmm, Sally realizes that her plate is not very colorful. Lots of browns and whites. So Sally says, no potatoes. Ooh, what about broccoli? Sally loves broccoli, so she chooses broccoli instead. Next, Sally thinks about fruits. She thinks to herself, you know what? I think I'll be pretty full with that meal since I had a big lunch. I think I'll save my fruit for dessert. Sally loves strawberries, so she chooses strawberries for her dessert. It's okay that Sally isn't going to have all of her foods on one plate at one time. Again, Sally makes sure to take about a cup of strawberries, which is what would fit in the corner of her plate. Lastly, Sally decides to have milk with her dinner. Sally always has milk with her dinner, so this is an easy one for her. Sally and her family just decided to switch from whole milk to 1% milk to try to limit their solid fat intake. This is great news for Sally's heart. Wow, Sally, what a great plate. She really maximized nutrition here and made some good choices so as to reduce those empty calories like when she chose low fat milk instead of whole milk. Remember, Building a healthy plate means choosing foods that help you get all of the big and small nutrients that your body needs while balancing your energy. All foods can be part of a healthy plate, but some foods should be chosen more often than others. These anytime foods are lower in added sugar, saturated fat, and sodium and provide lots of nutrients. These are the healthiest choices. These foods are easy to figure out where they go on the plate. Like the foods shown in this picture. Milk is a dairy food. Carrot is a vegetable. The salmon is a protein food. Whole wheat bread is a grain. And banana is a fruit. These anytime foods can be chosen anytime, should be chosen more often, and most should be included daily. There are other foods that we call sometimes foods, and these can be harder to figure out where they go on the plate. Like where does the candy, like these gummy bears go? Or what about chips? Are they a vegetable? And the cookies? Are they grains? Sometimes foods can be harder to figure out where they go on the plate. Or they may be foods like hot dogs that fit in protein foods but are higher in fat and saturated fat. These sometimes foods are the less healthy choices because they are higher in added sugars, solid fats, and salt or sodium. They also provide many of the empty calories we talked about before. Remember, these types of foods that are those that provide energy but little nutrition. You won't see too many vitamins, minerals, or fiber on potato chips, cookies, or gummy bears. It's not that you can't have these sometimes foods. That's just it. Choose them sometimes. Choose them less often. Include them on special occasions like maybe birthdays or at the ballpark. Just not all the time. Because choosing these foods too often makes it harder to keep your energy in balance. 
Remember, it's not about depriving yourself of these sometimes foods. It's about balance. And balance means choosing anytime foods anytime you want. And sometimes foods only sometimes. By using my plate to build your healthy plate, you will be guided towards a nice balance of healthy anytime foods more often. Remember, my plate is a teaching tool that shows us the five food groups that are the building blocks for a healthy diet using a familiar image, a place setting for a meal. My plate helps us visualize what our plates should look like to plan a healthy meal, get the nutrients we need, and keep our energy in balance. So here are a few key messages to help you bring it all together. My plate is a tool to help you find just the right balance of healthy foods, nutrients, and energy to fuel your life. The healthiest plan is to choose foods from each of the five food groups every day. Less healthy foods can be included sometimes. The amounts discussed in this presentation will suit most 4-Hers. However, you may need more or less of the food groups or energy depending on your age, gender, and activity level. So check out www.choosemyplate.gov for more information specific to you and also more information on the detailed food groups. And lastly, check out the additional resources on the 4-H webpage. Thank you for your attention and good luck in studying nutrition for 4-H foods projects.